So um, as Dr. Terrell was was speaking about um, the importance of a three-legged stool and the, you know, the balance between the different theologies, you need to have balance between your your biblical theology, your systematic theology, and uh, most of oh, just equally as important, we need to also have the balance of practical theology. So we need to know where our foundation is found from the Bible, what we believe, and then how to apply it. And why this is so important is if we uh, if we spend our time just applying whatever we think is right, then what we end up doing is we basically take our experiences and interpret the Bible accordingly, rather than letting the Bible interpret our experiences. So, um, one one question that uh, that Dr. Terrell was was speaking about is the con this concept of do you know? And of course, we we spend a lot of the time in the classroom uh, learning uh, the different components, learning how to interpret scripture, learning about the different doctrines. Um, but this all needs to move from head knowledge to asking the question, can you do? So we need to move all this information from, from our heads down to our hearts to be able to apply it. So there's three different tracks that I'll be speaking about. And in the under the practical theology section that we offer at BTC. So the first component is the pastoral studies. Second component is the youth studies. And the third component is the mission studies. So I'll, as I go through this presentation, you'll see that in the first year that it'll be compulsory to take the the courses under the uh, under each of these uh, heading uh, under each of these tracks in your first year and then as you come into your second year then you will start specializing in your uh, specific uh, tract uh, in the area that you believe that you're specifically called to and i'll go through that uh, in, in just a second now all of these three also um, culminate in something we call biblical and church residency. So biblical and church residency is a is a compulsory course through uh, throughout all four years. And it entails uh, practical components, um, spiritual formation components, um, components where you need to get involved in, in ministry. So our goal is and one of our requirements at BTC is for you to be involved in a local church. And I'll break that this course down for you uh, as it's a little bit complicated at face value, but hopefully as we go through it and I demonstrate, it'll become a bit, uh, a bit more clear for you. So what I wanna do is just break down the, the three um, practical tracks to, down for you here quickly. So let's start with the pastoral studies. So in the first three years in the Bachelor of Biblical Studies um, tract, you'll start in first year with hermeneutics. So this is the first semester of pastoral studies, and this is, uh, again, a, com a compulsory course for everyone to take. Likewise, in the second semester, you'll take a course called homiletics, so how to interact with the scripture as well as how to um, uh, prepare uh, the scripture to be able to preach it for a sermon, basically. Then from the second year, this becomes a an elective subject. So if you want to pursue the pastoral study tract, then from the second year, you'll take a, a course called Pastoral Apologetics and Biblical Worldview. And in the second semester of your second year, you'll take spiritual development. In your third year, you'll take uh, in your first semester, theology and practice of worship. And in your second semester of your third year, you'll take spiritual direction. All right. Then as you come into your um, Bachelor of Theology course, then you move into uh, the first semester of your fourth year at Pastoral Apologetics. And then in your second semester, Contemporary Ecclesiology. Then moving on to the Youth Studies tract. Again, in your Bachelor of Biblical Studies in your first year, this is also a compulsory course. In your first semester, you'll take just an introduction to youth ministry. 
then there's not a not a course for the second semester of the first year. So the next time you'll take a youth course is when you for for the elective. So when you choose to take um, the youth youth studies tract, you'll move to in your first your first semester of your second year, you'll take youth in crisis. And then in your second semester, you'll take children's ministry and childhood development. And third year, in the first semester, you'll take teenage ministry and de development theory. And in the second semester, you'll take young adults and singles ministry. Then moving into the batch uh, into your fourth year in the Bachelor of Theology, then you'll look at contemporary youth ministry in your first semester, as well as uh, youth ministry and social context in your second semester. Then moving into mission studies, again, this is your third option for uh, your um, electives and the, the track that you can specialize in. Under the Bachelor of Biblical Studies, in your first semester, you can take you will. It's a compulsory course. It's the introduction to missiology and church planting. And the second semester, again, another compulsory course is basic tools for apologetics, Christian evangelism, and discipleship. Then, from your second semester, you can choose um, again as an elective course for your your speciality is um, apologetics and techniques for evangelism. Second semester of your second year will be cultural anthropology uh, and developing your missional IQ. In your third year, you will be looking at world religions and marginal people. And the second semester of your third year will be looking at methods, strategies, global issues and reaching people. Then coming to your fourth year and your Bachelor of Theology. There is in your first semester is Mission Skills 1 and then mission skills too. Now, when you're looking at, at these you, and looking at specializing, you need to follow the tract of your specialty all the way through. So you need to, if you want to follow the postural tract um, to get your specialty in postural studies, then you need to take all the, um, the classes, all the components of postural studies. This also means you can, if you so choose, choose to take a, a class from one of the other uh, practical courses, um, but to specialize and to get your full accreditation, you'll need to take either all the, the postural tracts, all the youth tracts, or all the, the mission uh, tracts. Um, I hope that that makes sense. Then moving on to church residency, where you get to apply all of this, um, all of what you've learned in the classroom. Uh, we the best way to understand this course is to think of it as in four different pillars. So the whole course is held together as as the roof, uh, stabilized and supported by the four pillars. So the first pillar is what we call practical ministry. So what happens is during the, the course of the first um, semester or in case of the distance students, you'll have the, the course of the the yeah the full semester to to complete this. Um, or if you're available to come up and join the 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 full time students, you're also more than welcome to to join them. But what happens in the first year is you will end up reading the the, the entire Bible. Um, the full time students do it in six days there. I think you have a, a full semester to do it as a distance student. But if you choose to join the full time students, you're also more than welcome to do that. In the second year, uh, we require re require a rural exposure. So this is a missions trip to a rural area where you'll get involved with various different ministries in the, the rural context with partnering with rural churches and engaging in ministries in the rural context. Again, we do provide a uh, during the course of the semester, a week um, where the full time students will go up to Lucina to do their rural exposure. If you so desire, you are more than welcome to join them in, in that exposure. Otherwise, you will be responsible for setting up your own rural exposure and getting involved with a rural church and a rural community. In your third year, there is an urban exposure. 
which uh, basically get, gets you exposed to the different ministries that can happen in, a, in an urban context, in the inner city context. Again, we do uh, organize at the college for the full-time students to, to um, participate in this uh, component. If you, again, if you're available or if you're able to join us for that, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, you, again, will need to be responsible to organize that for yourself. And then finally, in the fourth year, you are required to do a shadowing of the of a person who's involved in the ministry that you are trying to specialize in. So if you're specializing in a pastoral uh, tract, then you'll be required to maybe shadow a, a pastor of a church. If you're specializing in youth studies, then perhaps a, a youth worker or youth pastor of, of a church other than your own. And then if you are desiring to go into missions, then again, you will look need to look at um, shadowing someone who's maybe a missionary or um, involved in a mission organization as such. Then the second component of the biblical and church residency is the preaching. So we require everyone to um, preach uh, uh, two sermons per year. The first semester, we'll be asking you to preach a textual sermon. So we'll, you'll be allocated a specific passage from the Bible that you'll need to prepare a sermon and then preach to, to someone. Uh, you can uh, either organize with, uh, with a church to, to be able to help you with this, or uh, we'll, you'll, you can also ask mentors and um, church leaders that, that might be able to assist in evaluating your, your sermons. In the second semester, we'll be given a, a specific topic, and then you'll, you'll be able to choose passages that will be able to help you and in, in able to, um, to preach that, that sermon. And then again, you'll need to be evaluated on that and then give feedback uh, back to your lecturer. The third component of the biblical and church residency is what we call the logbook. So what this entails is you to basically be involved, actively involved in various different ministries. And if your church doesn't offer some of these uh, ministries or if they're requirements for, for these logbooks, it, it asks you to to go to another church, then you'll need to follow those uh, those guidelines. Uh, but basically, um, throughout all the the year groups, um, I've listed here um, some of the the possibilities of what what they'll be looking for for these logbooks. And then uh, you'll go participate in the specific requirements um, that is presented in the course directive for that specific year. And then you'll write uh, for a 300 to 400 year, uh, 300 to 400 word reflection on that experience. Um, so that doesn't require additional research, but that does require you to be actively involved in ministries. Then finally, there's the spiritual formation component. So this entails, uh, there are two um, books that you'll need to read throughout the course of the year. These are readily available on Desiring God, and we'll provide links for those um, on your course directives. And I, I think those are also, those links are also provided on the, on the forum on Schoology. So those are easily accessible to you. So you'll need to read these two books, and then you'll need to um, read that and then go into discussion with a mentor who's also uh, read those and as distance students I believe you need to meet with a with a mentor at least three times a semester so there's one book for the first semester and the second book for the second semester and then at the end of the year you'll need to write a report on on both books and the time that uh, that you spent in those uh, discussion periods um, with your your mentor so it's more of a uh, a reflection rather than a book review. So that's that's all from um, from my side. <laughs>